All right. Welcome, guys, again. So this is the second part of the introduction to software testing that we started last week. So it's, like I said, it's um, a trainee hosted by Blue Sky Citadel, which is a non-profit educational institution by RCCG City of God in Crayford, London. So we offer free IT training courses in different disciplines, um, introduction to IT, introduction to Excel, and also advanced Excel. So software testing with different flavors. We've done Java, we've done with C Sharp, we've done with Specflow. Now also we do also place people on internship for different programs. So and. Today we're going to focus on introduction to software testing. So, and last week we've done a quick introduction. So today we're going to continue that. Okay, let's continue. Today we're going to discuss about different test process and also we're going to discuss about test level, test types and also we're going to also discuss about the test techniques if time permits. So first thing about um, that we're going to discuss today is the fundamental or oh, fundamental test process. So we have different test processes you know, in development actually so in development life cycle so the most common one that we're going to discuss today is going to be the waterfall module the v module agile and there are different flavor of agile as people already know there's chrome there's Kanban, sp and and the likes but today we're going to focus on on scrum and we're going to look into into that so this is not agile class so and so bear with me i might not touch on every part of agile this is basically introduction to software testing so if you're interested in learning agile this is not this is not a class for it so but i'll try as much as possible to go into uh, this uh, life cycle in not in great detail but as required for a tester. So waterfall, what exactly is waterfall methodology? So waterfall module is very popular and I think in when I started even development and also testing was one of the you know, de uh, development life cycle that are so so popular and it's basically the traditional approach or, or the classic one. So it is a, your development life cycle is defined in linear or sequential order. So each level of your development life cycle has a distinct goal and for each of the What's phase it? of development. So you have a distinct goal, you have a distinct purpose. Yeah. Excuse me. But me teach the voice. Okay, so for waterfall development, and like I said, it's got distinct goal for each of the phase of development. So, for instance, the requirements you need to know at the requirement stage, you, you need to test the requirements at the system design. You need to have tested system at integrate implementation stage. There's also goals to be achieved on that. So. Everything now must start like that, so and it goes from then. So in but this is analogy that I will use to to define waterfall is basically like as you know water is falling on the cliff. So and if you have a water running down, flowing to the edge of the cliff, it cannot go back again. So that is the same thing with waterfall. 
So in waterfall, it's the same thing that development starts from requirement, it goes to system design, implementation, and also it goes to the integration and testing. So, and if you want to go to the top, it becomes dif uh, difficult and also costly. So what happens in this instance is that uh, when user comes, they want to build a system, they get a requirement, and there will be a technical author or technical design engineer that convert that requirement into a system design, and also the developer will implement that particular uh, design, and then they give to a tester to test. So the tester tests and also give feedback. So and after that, there will be deployment of the system, and the system now goes into a maintenance phase. But the problem that we have with this system is like, if as a tester, that most of us we are, and you are sitting at this particular level of integration and testing, so and you find any bug, when you found that bug, if the bug is in the requirement. So that means the system has to go into the requirement phase and go down again and go into the system design and go into implementation and go into uh, testing again. So by that, it's very, very costly. That's why I said uh, if you want to proceed into the uh, previous uh, phase, it is very, very costly. For instance, if you want to go from your system, from your integration testing, and you want to say, okay, ah, the problem is on system design. And that means you have to do implementation of that system again. You have to even do testing again. But as maybe the system already gone into maintenance, and they now find issue in the maintenance, you have to go through all those things, depending on where exactly the issue is. So that is the issue with waterfall. Like I said, if you want to rem remember this particular analogy, is basically knowing that it's like a cleft, basically. So when water is f falling through from a mountain in a steep in a steep mountain, so it cannot return back to the top. So basically, it's the same thing. So and. So the next one that we want to discuss, the next metal methodology is V module. V module, as the name implies, is verification of and also validation module. So in this module, every testing execution should follow some sequence. And by sequence, I mean there is a perfect way for you to perform each of these steps. So, and there is a perfect um, way to perform the test approaches that you're going to follow. So, what you are going to do in a V module is like, at the user requirements, when users are gathering requirements, there will be preparation of a, um, a document, which is you will call a and test document. They will prepare it at hand. And then the system, when it goes into system requirement also, you also prepare a system testing document also. Then also, even in the unit testing also, they will also do that, something like that. So then after implementation, so then it goes back again and you start to execute those documents as you go up in the ladder. So you do your integration testing, you do your own unit testing, which is also component testing. You do your integration testing, and you do your system testing. You do your acceptance testing, and you do your uh, operational um, testing. But based on the document that you have already provided before. So you're going to move down on the ladder when you are doing develop development, and you're going to move up in when you are doing your testing. Basically, it means that you are going to get your system requirements, you are going to get your user requirements rather, and you're going to get your system requirements, you are going to get your design done, and you're going to get your detailed design, design also done, and you're going to get your implementation or done. And then after that, you get your unit testing done, you get your integration done, and you get your system. So on and on like that, that's what you, you will do in a V module. So 
So testing starts at the beginning of the project, basically, as you can see. But it's not that you're going to be testing. You're going to be doing the uh, preparation of the document. But after that, then your testing is going to, because there's nothing that's going to be handed over to you uh, uh, before the implementation. But before the implementation, there will be requirements that you can actually work upon. And you can, prov uh, uh, from the requirements, you can actually do your uh, test cases. You can do your, any uh, test design that you want to do. So you got those luxury. But your testing is still going to happen phase on from from unit testing phase up or up like that. So that that's the V V module approach. And then that leads us to the next one, which is kind of very very uh, favorable one that people now use more often right now, which is Agile. So Agile is an iterative approach to project management or and also software development. So it helps the customer to uh, develop application faster, so to say, and also with a fewer headaches. So, but instead of like what we've seen before, what we've seen before, instead of uh, the implementation of the whole system uh, happening at the bottom part of the system, when you, got, you gather your requirements and you just do everything. So, it is not the case for Agile. In Agile, you do everything in iteration. You divide your application into different parts, and you, divide, you do uh, requirements gathering for that, particular requir uh, for that particular part of the product, and then you do basically all this in chunk of, of the system. You don't, you don't do everything in a, in a big bank like we've done in the previous one. So, in V module. If you are working on a, uh, let's say on a website, actually, let's say product on a big product, you you gather every requirement for all that particular product, and you gather the system requirement, you do the design for everything, and then you go into implementation of the system. But and then after that, so it's different from waterfall. Waterfall, the requirement is done, system is done implementation is already done, then testing starts. So then setting, when testing starts, then you need to start gathering, the, you need to now take the requirements, write your test cases and everything, and do everything from there, because that's where your testing starts. Doesn't, you know, and even tester is not uh, required at the beginning of the, of the project, basically. So at the beginning of the project, requirements, they do requirement gathering, that might be months, uh, you do your system design, that might be another month, so, and you do your implementation also. But after that, you start your testing. But then V module is a bit better than Waterfall in, in the sense that even at the beginning of the project, testing can be involved. So, but what you are going to be doing at that particular time is as the requirement has been generated, you are going to be writing your acceptance uh, testing document, you are going to add also when they move to system requirements, you're going to be generating your system test documents or your test plan. In some cases, you, you might not be in a project that test plan now runs into maybe 100 or 1,000 page document or something like that because I need some people will sit down in there for like seven months what they are going to be doing is we are writing test uh, test script and they can they can be there for many months writing only test script for a particular project and um, because even the implementation is not yet the, uh, done because and then when implementation is done what happens is like the system must have even changed the test script is no longer valid everything is now changed so that is the uh, disadvantage of of V module, but in Agile, so you only take a part of that system, and you take a part of the system, you do a requirement for that particular system, and then also you test that uh, that particular uh, part of the system, and you hand that over to the uh, to the business to be able to test. So in, in that you get a feedback quickly, and then also. 
uh, development team also work together. There's a collaboration and also communication, even that is an angst in, in that particular team. Because in the previous one that we have in V module, so even sometimes you don't need to talk to the developer because they don't hand over anything to you. You you only you might just sit sit down there and uh, start writing requirements. Developers also because they are doing implementation, they bury their head on the computer and then they are coding the way, <laughs> not talking to tester. Then you don't get feedback uh, on time about what they are developing. So when they finish development, then you bring those documents that you've created based on this different level of uh, 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 of, uh, of of the cycle. For instance, if you are now going to be doing your system testing, you bring out your system testing uh, test script. If you are going to be doing your acceptance testing, you bring your acceptance testing document, which is based on the user requirement. So, but in Agile, it's a different totally. You have less documentation, so to say. So because of that, you tend to uh, collaborate more with developers and also you tend to see changes more quickly from from there so as you can see from here from this diagram that you can see the first thing you said in in a cycle you come in you find oh there's a requirement coming in they you do the design or the ba does the design and it's developed and they test quickly so that cycle of sprint one goes into that for each of the products or even an item that is in, is in the sprint. So then also after everything in the sprint has finished, that is released to the user and you move to another sprint and on and on like that, you, you, you go into that cycle so that before that finish. So as I said also, there are different flavor of Agile and to be honest, it's so, so agile that the other flavor, it makes it to be even more like fragile, to be honest. So, and you need to be sure which type of agile that you are following at work. So, as you know, we have Scrum, we have Kanban, and some people, there's even Kanban, or so it's like, it's not Kanban, now, it's not Scrum. So, it's now mixed together. So, but, uh, as I know, Agile uh, Scrum is one of the most popular framework for implementing Agile, to be honest. So popular that even many people, when you are mentioning Scrum, they think Scrum is Agile. But it's not. It's totally not. It's not Agile. So there are other parts that I've mentioned. There's Kanban also. I think also uh, there's also SP and other flavor uh, for Agile. But one thing I so, so enjoy and I know uh, that about Scrum is the commitment, commitment to work projects, commit, commitment to short iteration, commitment to deliverables. That in Scrum, you are committed to a particular task or some tasks that you are going to do within the sprint. So, and I mentioned sprint. Sprint is a short or time box period when a Scrum, a scrum team should deliver a set of work. So, what does that mean, actually? So, when you work in an Agile and you are using Scrum, you will have a time allocated in each of the sprints that your sprint could be two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, or five weeks. But they're different, like I said, they're different flavor. But the most common one that you will hear about are two-week sprints, short and then committed work so that within two weeks you are able to deliver something. You are able then what you are going to be committing to the sprint is something that you can be able to deliver within two weeks. So those things that you think that okay. Good. Commit to. So for instance if you are working on a website and let's say you're working on a website and this website you have registration to do, you have, uh, excuse me, please. Okay. So, 
uh, for instance, in this uh, project, you may have registration to be done, you may have login to be done, you may have maybe posting the blogs to be done, you may have other features like feedbacks to be done, you may have a uh, user account to be done, you may also have maybe different features that you want to do and this thing can take maybe few months to, to be, for them to do, let's say six months. For in waterfall, everything has to be spec'd out. Everything has to be spec'd out. Everything has to be developed. Then they give it to a tester to start testing, maybe a few months after it's been developed. But in Agile, it's not that so. What you're going to do is, maybe in two weeks, you're going to say, we're going to do only the registration and login. And that's it. So within two weeks, you'll be able to show to the user that the user can register and the user can log in and that's it and you commit to that and then what that means is that within one or two days you are able as a tester to get something from developers so it's not like you're going to be sitting for a few months before you can actually get something within a few days or one or two days you're going to be getting something from from developers so in in a scrum team, who are the people that make a scrum a, a scrum team? So the first, there are three sets of people that you, you have in a scrum team. One of them is a scrum master, and you have the product owner, and you have the dev team, which people call developers. So a scrum master is meant to Organize the scrum. I mean, I meant organize, not manage. So, because a scrum team is self management. No, there is no concept of a manager in a strong team. Also, it's self management, it's self reliance. Everyone should know what they need to do at a very particular time. You go to the board, you take your tax, and then you hand over. So, but the scrum team is there to facilitate the scrum and to make sure things are run in order and to also uh, train people to make sure that they follow the concept and the principle of, of, of Agile and also for uh, Scrum Master also is there to remove any impediment to remove any blocker that the team will have. basically it's going to be there to ensure that the team does what they're meant to do best basically and also to go for meetings to give report to the business owners and also the stakeholder about how the team is doing another person also within the scrum team is the product owner basically this is the person that actually tells the team this is the next project that you need to do this is the next type that you need to do from his own priority he, he goes in there and he prioritizes the backlog so i mentioned about backlog backlog is now different tasks that you need to do so these are different tasks that you need to do so you have two types of backlog one backlog is the product backlog which is everything that you need to to do in for that particular product so and also you can also have you will also have a sprint backlog from the product backlog you bring other things into the sprint so for instance in your product backlog you can have maybe 500 items to be developed so like i mentioned you can have the login you can have the registration you can have the feedback you can have the posting you can have the blogs you can have different functionalities that you want to do but then at the beginning of the sprint you look into there and you can say oh we want to do five items in this particular sprint you bring that particular five items into the sprint backlog and it's the responsibility of the product owner to actually prioritize those things that say okay this is what we want to do next this is what should be done next because it's the product owner of that of the uh, of the application then both of them also there's also business owner and also stakeholders those ones that pay for, or that finance the, the project and so one minute i think there's a question 
So I think that that is that. So and like I said, we have three types of people in in the Scrum team. So the Scrum master, the product owner, and also we have the development team. Now you will ask question and say, where is the tester? Where is the developers? Where is the business analyst? So yeah, so those have been categorized as dev team, and some people will just call everyone a developer. So, but you as a QA, as a developer, or as a business analyst, there are other roles also that are needed to be able to build that application. Everyone um, is categorized as a part of, as a member of the dev team. So, okay, so that is that for for the Agile and also the test uh, uh, methodologies that, that we've done also I've uh, mentioned about. So one thing I also want to talk about is now the ceremonies in Agile. So I think I, I left that slide uh, out. The ceremonies as in what do you do as a QA in Agile? So what's your role in Agile? I'll just go through day-to-day -day activities of, let's say, an automation tester in an Agile team. So the first thing you do in the beginning of the sprint, you might do one of the ceremonies that is called sprint, uh, sprint planning or backlog refinement. So where you go in there, and you, like I said, you have your product backlog, which contains everything about the application that you want to build. So, and you need to review those product backlog items and then to prioritize them and say, these items need to be br brought into the sprint. So from there, you now do something, or another ceremony that is called grooming session. So the people call it different names anyway. So at the grooming session, you now sit down and now deliberate on those items in your product backlog items to see, oh, these particular items, you want to be able to bring them into the sprint, but we don't know the effort that we need to be able to do them. So what you need to do, read the requirement, and then bring your input as a QA, and also developer also will bring that input as a developer, and also the, even everyone. So from there, you will now estimate that particular item. So there are different ways to estimate an item so or a work item. So some people use t-shirt sizes to say small, medium, large, or extra large. Some people use point system. So I think I favor the point system to be honest So uh, because then you can use Fibonacci series. Fibonacci series is one, two, three, five, eight. It's actually in the same way. One plus one is two. Two plus one is three. Three plus two is five. Five plus three is eight. Then eight plus three is thirteen. Thirteen plus eight is twenty-one. On and on like that. That's how you get the Fibonacci series. So, in in the grooming session, you can estimate and you can say, oh. You as a QA will look at the story and you can say this story is two points and developer can look at it and say this story is five points. Another person can look at it and say this story is maybe eight points. So you, you deliberate on the point system. But another thing also that I found is when you are doing that, so you see some people that are vocal, some people that have got more experience will always take the day. Because, for instance, if uh, I, uh, you meet someone in a walk, actually, the person has been there for like eight years, and you are just there for one or two days, and the person said this item is going to take uh, five points, and I bet you will just align and say, yeah, five points, because you don't know the application that way. You think you don't know the application that way, uh, but if... John, that has been there for eight years, can say five points. 
you want to do that. You want to say, oh, it's five points. John, John said that. So because of that, some people favor the approach of using a poker series. So in that regard, it's like, so that people don't, some voices are not so, Okay, one minute. Okay, like I said, so in the process of doing the grooming, so, and you see some pe people literally cheating, uh, saying, okay, when John has said five, uh, James will also say five. Uh, because John is experienced, then Mark also will say five. Then <laughs> everyone will just say five because John has said so. So to solve that issue, people uh, some teams are now using poker series so what they do is like you bring like a poker like a card basically so everyone go will get that cards uh, it's got like one three and it's got the Fibonacci series everyone got a pack of that card so when the after deliberation of that particular story they will not ask everyone to bring their card out so you bring it at this particular at the same time so or some people that are so traditional will now say you don't need to shout it out you want to say one two three you can raise your hand to say if you want or two so we want to do it simultaneously so that no one is actually looking sideways to just to spy on what other people are saying because what happens is like you want everyone to have a say in a in a scrum you want everyone to have a say because it's possible that john may be experienced because he knows the code so well but James is just joining, right, and doesn't know. So he also needs time to be able to do that thing that John is doing. So because even, even John could say five, it might also mean eight or even 13 for, for James. So that voice needs to be heard also. It's also possible that even as a Kiwi, sometimes you might feel like your voice is being suppressed because developers are saying it is three and you want to say, oh yeah, it's easy to develop, but there are a lot of things that I need to, to test. So because of that, you, you, need, to, you need to go on uh, to be able to present that in using that poker series. So that is the, that's the, that what what she's to solve the issue. So yeah, so that is that on in time of the ceremony. So then after that, uh, what you are going to do in a scrum, you're going to do another meeting that when you start as a as a keyway, let's say you are a oh, let's say you are automation tester, right? So and even if you're a manual tester. So on your first day of the sprint, you've done the, uh, you've done the grooming, everything is in the sprint, then you need to do like a stand-up. At the stand-up, you are meant to answer three questions. One, what did you do yesterday? What are you going to do today? And is there any impediment or blocker that will prevent you from doing your job? So those are the three questions that you need to answer. One, what you did yesterday, what you are going to do today, and is there any impediment that will prevent you from doing what you need to do? Those are the things that you want to answer. So, so then, after that, you will expect to start sitting down, because on the first day of the sprint, you, will, you, might not, you, may, you may not get anything from developers to test. Because you don't have anything to test, what are you going to be doing? You are not going to be folding your hands. Because there are requirements that will have written or about to be written. So you might have to do like what is called like a three amigo sessions. So when developers are picking up a story, you will do a three amigo session. You sit down with the developer and you sit down with the uh, BA to write the requirement out so that you can provide your own input into the re requirement. So, and also, after that, you start writing your test cases out. So, as you can see now, you have a full knowledge of the application you, because you start together with the 
business owner or product owner or the BA and you analyze the requirement together. So based on that, you can start, you can use that knowledge to write, to start writing your test cases. If you are also automation tester also, you can start to write your giving when then in Gaikin and put everything together and you know you, you cannot write your step definition because the application is not yet developed but you can write your feature files, you can write your also you, you can write your page object to a point even though you know maybe the pro, um, other objects are not available you can write your skeleton of your step definition also and to that point so and also you can also run your application just to use like a test driven development so when you run it you are sure that it's going to fail because there are other parts of the system that has not been developed so and that is you testing your application that it can actually fail basically then from there you move to another um, item that also needs to be designed, you design your test cases for them, also as a manual tester, also you as a manual tester, you also design your uh, feature file if you are going to be doing automation, you do the same thing also. So you carry on like that until you get your first item that you need to be tested. Then when you get it also as a manual tester, you start to test that application. So when you start test application as a manual tester, so you go to your uh, app, um, test case that you've written so we're going to look into how to write your test cases in this test in uh, in this training so i will tell you the uh, the test design approach and uh, techniques that you can use but i'm just going through this process so that you know what is your day to day as a agile tester so so after that when you are testing your application maybe there's there are bugs also you raise your bug and in a bug what you put in your bug you put your steps that you want to use to recreate and we we'll also go through that and, and also on Tuesday next week we're going to have another um, tutor that is going to actually go through with us a practical aspect of what I'm telling you right now to go through how do you raise a bug, how do you design your test cases using a practical uh, aspect of it. So we're going to be using uh, Azure DevOps, uh, which is formally called VSTS, or if you are you know, ancient or traditional like myself, it, it was even the former test manager that it was there. So it has changed name from different parts from test manager, VSTS, so it's now called Azure DevOps. So you're going to be using that. So and okay, going back to our testing. So then when you test your application, there's a bug, you raise a bug, you put your step that you used to create it and you put if there's any screenshot, you put you put that also if there's any log also you put it also. Uh, you might also put some priorities, some people allow that also our severity also to see if it's critical, if it's, we go through how to analyze severity later in future, so to see how can I actually say this particular item is uh, high or medium or critical in, in, but all this goes into your test uh, strategy to be honest. So I'll also briefly mention a uh, test strategy maybe uh, so th that's another document that you, when you join an, a, a company as a tester you need to ask for your test strategy every establishment should be able to have one it defines what testing or quality should be uh, in that particular organization so if time permits next week, I will look into test uh, strategy. is is a a document that every team show up. So if your team don't have it, so maybe it's time for you to start preparing that. So, all right. So then you do you raise the bug. The developer fix the bug. After they fix the bug, and 
then you need to do oh, retesting of that particular bug. I will go into another part of the uh, ses session, excuse me, session right now, which is talk about even the uh, confirmation, different type of different levels of testing. So I think in terms of the methodology, so this this is it. So um, so that is that part of, of that. So yeah, so that so other people can actually have access to the video. So yeah, today we're going to look into test levels of testing. So mm, level of testing. So we have unit testing, we have integration testing, and also we have system testing and assistant testing. So we're going to look into the different these different levels of testing. So um, So, like I said, unit testing is also known as component testing and sometimes also module or program testing and is done at the point of development or when developers are coding for the application. So, objective of the testing is to isolate a section of the code or a function of the code or a method and you now verify its correctness. You verify that that particular method or function does what you should do. And also, you want to confirm that it is in line with your coding standard also. And yeah, it, depending on the context of your development life cycle, you might want to uh, isolate a part of the system and also test on that system. So, uh, but unit testing is basically done done by developers. It's done by developers. So, and um, sometimes they might need to use stop drivers or mock or or different mock services to be able to perform some part of the uh, unit testing. So and so it's basically also include testing of functionalities and also non-functional parts uh, of the application. So integration testing. This is the part that some people, even most developers and also QA, sometimes they miss this together. To be honest, there's some on there's different notion of what integration testing is actually. So, but I would say integration testing actually tests the interfaces between components. It tests the interaction between different parts of the office systems such as operating system, file system, hardware, or interface between two different systems. So, so it's often carried out by the developers or even the tester or, or people that does the uh, integration, basically, that couple that particular system together. But I would say preferably, so even though it's done is done by the integrator or developer, it's also even preferably need to be done by an integration tester. So I think this is the part that even the um, the developers can or the tester can uh, uh, get some friction. So be to say who does this part is is the the tester is it the developer or do we need to do it together? So that's why I actually have actually support the fact that the, if I say integrator, that could mean the developer. So even though developer also need to do integration testing, testing, also it's advisable for a tester also to be able to know that. So they will focus on different level of integrations. So they will focus on different level of integration. So and uh, that's where that I said there's misconception about integration testing. So and um, in the concept of API, some people think 
API is <laughs> integration testing. So if you do API testing, you are doing integration testing. I don't necessarily believe that, to be honest, but that's a discussion for next time. Okay, but for integration testing, so this can be focused on different level of integration, to be honest. So we you can do unit integration testing or component integration testing. So for this, I would say maybe a developer should do this also because they know how this particular module bring together, comes together. So, and they can actually test the interaction between these uh, components and so they can actually do this integration testing between these uh, components. So, but now coming to system integration testing, how can different systems now interact together? So, yeah, so that also needs to be tested. And concept of system is so, so big that what is actually a system. We're going to go into system testing right now. So a system could be small, could be big. So and that, that's another thing. So some people could take a component as a, as a system on its own. So that's why I said there's kind of um, integration here. <laughs> so to say, let me not say misconception. This needs to be uh, developer and also tester needs to be integrated together to be able to make this work at this level. So, so someone asked me about regression. I uh, will talk about regression still in in the future. Okay, system testing. System testing. So, like I said, system testing also it tests the behavior of the whole system and also divine the scope of development project or project or product. That is basically the system that will be released also. So in testing in system testing you want to base it on risk on also it can also based on the requirements on specification business process. You can you you can also use a use case uh, also and you can have high level description of the application or or interaction between the operation system. So those are the things that you want to be able to test. So, but it's often the final test of of the application, but not necessarily so, to be honest, because it is the final test mostly before assessment testing by by the users, to be honest. So, in in some people will also do system testing and also do system integration testing after this. So and then you can see different level of testing. So you need to focus on in system testing you focus on both the functional testing and also the non functional testing of, of the system. So and so we're going to talk about those ones also later. So then acceptance testing. So acceptance testing I'll go quickly on, on that also. It is performed uh, as even at the system le level, to be honest, but in this case, it is performed by the user or a representation of the user. So basically, you're going to answer uh, some question: Can the system be released? What if there's any outstanding risk or bug? Can we still go live? So as development meets its obligation. So this is what the stakeholder are going to be answering or a rep of the user or, or customer are going to be answering to say you are going to be testing at this point you are not testing for bugs you are not testing for defects to be honest you are testing to say okay as this particular application meet our requirement can we go live go live with this particular system so that is what you're going to be looking into so and it's not about finding bug at this particular time. So yeah, that is that on system level. So we're going to go into another part of, of the system. So we've talked about uh, integration, we talk about unit testing, we talk about the uh, system testing and also the acceptance testing. So the next part we're going to go into right now uh test types the test types so what are the 
target of testing, what type of testing do, do we do? So, one, functional testing. So, a function of a system is basically what that, part, that, that particular system does, what that system actually is going to do. So, and you have the requirement that specify what you should do. So, when, when you're doing a, your functional testing, you need, you basically based on that particular requirement or the functional part of the system. So, and also there are some assumptions also that based on your experience, some of them might be documented, some of them might be your instinct or something like that, you also want to base it upon. But, however, it will be based on functions. It will be based on the functions of the applications. And functional testing considers the specific behavior and is often referred to as black box testing. This is totally untrue. This is not true, to be honest. Since black box testing also include non-functional testing. So you can you cannot because some people look at in this thing and say, I'm doing functional testing and they say, Oh, you're doing black box testing testing. No, it's not. So it's they are totally different things. So we need to clarify clarify that basically. So black box testing also can be non functional. So and you can be doing functional testing and also you, you can it can also use a white box testing for it. So but we could talk about what exactly is white box, what is black box testing. So so yeah testing functionality can be in two perspectives. You can use raw requirement and you can use business process. So business process based on the knowledge of the business process. Some people based on how the application has been used day to day and everything, you can you can use that. And also based on the requirement that has been re, uh, designed, you can design your test cases based on that. So and a good way to start, if you're using a requirement base, is to have a table of the content of the requirement, and then you can use that as your test conditions to say, or if you look into the requirement and you can say, this requirement I got 20 items, and then you can use those as your test condition. So we're going to talk about test condition later. So another one is non-functional. Non-functional, which is the second target of testing, is you are not you are not testing the function of the application, but only the characteristics or the attribute of the assist, of the of the system. So some of the attributes of the system is like the time it takes to respond, uh, and also you could look into the load, you could look into the stress, how is it, is it user friendly, can we port this application easily, can we maintain it easily, is it reliable, so those are the things that you want to test in a non-functional testing, is it efficient, so those are the things, so, but not in terms of, we are not talking about in terms of functional testing, but no, it's basically on characteristics of that particular application that you are testing. So those are the non-functional testing. So, so another part or also, or another target of testing is the structure of these systems. So this is where now I refer structural testing as white box or glass box. It's basically that you can see through what goes into inside the application, basically, the structure of the application. So you know the flow of the application, you can do a flow chart of the application, you know, you can, because it's kind of like a thoroughness of the application. You want to cover the system, the statement of the application, you want to do a decision coverage of that particular application. So you might need to be able to go into the code to be able to do that, so to be honest. So, and you want to measure the code coverage to be able to say how many statement coverage we have, how many decision coverage we have. So you're able to do that. I would say most of this one will be done by 
developers. Most of the white box destined to be done by developer. So, so and now I think someone actually mentioned this uh, asked this question that what is what about regression? So, and I said the next part I'm to, going to talk about is the confirmation and also regression testing. So, what are these actually? And so, uh, in the first part, I was mentioning about you being an agile tester. So, when you start your day as an agile tester, what do you do? You start writing your test cases. After writing your test cases, you then start to, uh, yeah, when you write your test cases, then after that, if you get the application from the developers, you start to develop, or you start to test the application. So, the first thing that you do is confirmation testing. So, this is when you now determine that this application actually does what it needs to do. So, like, oh, when application fails, yeah, I mentioned that in, in that case, that one, when you do, uh, when you do test, right, and you raise a bug, when you raise the bug, what happens when the bug has been fixed, right? So, the first thing, you've got an application. You've tested the application, and now, but the application has, co has contained some bug. It contains some bug because it doesn't meet the requirements. The requirement says it should be, um, maybe the text box should be aligned to the left, but it's not aligned to the right. That is a bug because it different, it, there's a differentiation between what the application is doing and what the spec says. So now, what do you do? You raise a bug and you set the bug and you say, oh, the application, the text box is not aligned as the requirement says. And the developer goes away, look at the requirement, and say, oh, ah, that's a bug. And the uh, uh, developer fixes that particular bug. Then what do you do? You do a confirmation test. So as a confirmation test, what you need to do is now to now retest that particular bug that you found. You have to use the same data, the same step that you've done before that discovered that particular bug. I'll say that again. When you are doing retesting, you have to use the same test case, the same test data, the same step, the same input, and also the same environment that you've used before to test that application. Because you want to be able to ascertain that that particular bug has been fixed. So you want to go through that, the same process that you've gone, and you want to be able to establish that. Then once you've done that, then also, that if it's passed, brilliant, that's cool, that's cool. But you don't only leave that, you go to the next level, which is now the regression testing. The regression testing, like confirmation testing, you want to establish that your application has not regressed. Your, app, your application has not regressed. So, but like the... Uh, confirmation testing that you use the same uh, test case, the same, but now you're going to use the same test cases, you're going to use the same test, but not the same thing that you've done. You're going to use it like this last time that you've done the testing before. Let's say you are testing a login, right? You are, no, let's, okay, in a si simple scenario, you are testing a registration, right? So the registration, there's a bug in there. But bec now, they now fix that registration that is a bug. But before the registration, you've tested login screen, right? And the login screen was working. So when you did now fix registration, right? After you've tested that registration is fine, you need to now go back to login and to reconfirm that the login functionality has not regressed. So that means they've not broken something that was working before. So your process, you, you, you are trying to verify that the new modification they've done into the, as, into the environment has not caused unintended adverse side effects at all to the system. And the system still meets its requirement. That's what you want to do by regression. So the same way also, you, you go and you test it based on 
the previous test cases that you've used before and you test it because you know that test cases passed before and you just want to be able to do that because so that some people in some organization right now or most organizations now have a common way so they will not create a pack and they call, we call it a, like a regression test pack so that anytime a new modification is made they actually to now run your test to your regression suite or your test pack so that to be sure that the application still works so and this is the most important part of automation right because instead of having to run a regression suite of maybe two hours or three hours sometimes some people will take a whole day to do that you can build your automation uh, uh, automation suite for that so you al align some candidate that's for that needs to be for the automation regression suite so you can use them for for your automation so that is the difference between the confirmation and regression confirmation you test that that application at so which was failed before is now passed and the defect is now fixed but in regression you now want to check that the fixes has not caused any side effects to to the application so that is that for uh, the that types of testing that we've gone through the type of testing so we've mentioned different types of testing we've mentioned functional testing we have mentioned non-functional testing structural testing also we've looked at confirmation and regression testing so okay so today we're going to start the test design techniques so we may not finish it today but we try to see what, where we can get to okay so identifying your test conditions so the first thing you need to do you need to analyze and you need to do like test analysis so which is the process of looking at uh, something uh, of course analysis is like you analyze what you're going to do so and you look at your test basis which is your test conditions so you could like what you're going to do and then your you design your test cases from there so basically what is a test condition so this is one quest question a friend of mine asked me before and it I always rem remember him like every time when I teach this particular place so what is a test condition so and uh, I, he was saying that a test condition is a condition for testing <laughs> like they take they give you a condition basically not to, on a lighter mode so test condition is simply something that you could test something that you want to test something that you can test a feature that you want to test or a condition that you want to test or an application that you want to test or a part of an application that you want to test so that's what is called a test condition so so then the test basis will be the code itself and or the list of the uh, and the list of test condition will be the decision outcomes true or false so for instance let's say if you have a requirement the list of contents also that you have in there like I said before could be your test conditions also so let's say you have your requirements your requirement has got uh, let's say list of values or um, list of content basically let's say list of content is go I want to this requirement is for uh, login is for registration is for posting an item is for saving an item is for editing an item those are your test conditions your test condition will be the login your test condition will be 
saving uh, registration members, uh, registered member, editing registered member, or posting an item or updating the blog. Those are your test conditions. Those are features that you want to test. So those are called test conditions. So now, also, after that, what do you need to do? Test implementation, all right? So specifying your test process. So because now, the next process is for you to now group your test cases into different groups. Because one, you have uh, your test condition. You want to test a, let's say you want to test a login. When you want to test a login, what do you do? You bring different um, steps that you want to do. So what are the steps for you to do that? You want to click on this, click on that. So, so all these are different processes that you need to go into. So these test cases now, you, you now have a sequence of steps that sometimes is going to be in an executable order. So for, like I said, you want to test that I'm able to log in. What do you do? You go to the website, you click on login, you enter your username, you enter your password, you click on login. So those are the steps. So that now forms your test script or your test process. So, so the first thing I said, my test condition is now my login feature. Now, I want to now create my test process, procedure, or my test script for my test condition, which is the login. So, so, and so I said the test um, condition is the feature I am testing, for instance, the login or the registration, right? So, now, for me to test that, I need to specify is some steps that needs to be run. For instance, if I'm going to be testing registration, I need to say, go to this particular website, click on registration, enter uh, your name, enter your username, enter your password, enter your details, and then click on register. Then I'm able to register. So those steps are, is now, because they are in executable order, you need to write them down so that what is called your test procedure. And you now put them together, and you can group them together in that order, and they become your test script. So when you now come as a manual tester, you take those test scripts, and you now go into each of the steps, and you perform those steps. And those test scripts can also now be converted into your automation script. So basically, you now perform those actions using your code. So I put this kind of as a summary. So I will just quickly look into that. So, uh, oh, I think last week I mentioned that most of us would do testing. So I'll say most people would do static testing. You might have been, you might have done an informal review with some people, as in having to even check someone work before, or you done a walkthrough, or you inspect and a work before or you've done some auditing, so it's basically like a static testing. You are not executing the application. You are only reviewing documents or you are reviewing the code of, or for that particular application. So the next part is dynamic testing that we do. Dynamic testing, you are executing that particular application. So for you to do that, so you're going to go into the there are different ways to do dynamic testing. So you can this the first one is structure based testing. So which we've looked into before and which is what 
it's called the white box testing. So you look into the application, you look into even the code itself, and you can confirm the statement, the coverage of the statement, the coverage of the decision, and the condition, multiple conditions, and so you are looking into the code, basically. And like I said, most of this part also, also will, will be done by a developer. Now, coming back to the next one, also, specification based. So this is where I will focus next time that we, we meet. So, and if you don't know any, at least these two, I think you need, you need to look into that properly. So we're going to look into that. It's very, very important for most testers to, to know what equivalent partition is. So, and also boundary value analysis. So, and then decision tables, state, transition, use case testing. So, these are different techniques that you can use uh, for you know, specification based testing. So, and another one is experience-based testing. So basically, based on your experience, you want to test the application. What are the techniques that you can use? You can use error guessing, exploratory testing, attacks, and there are different other techniques also that you can use for that. So I think I would stop at this point point today so if any question I quickly want to do something quickly before we leave. Okay, can everyone see my screen? I'm actually showing an Excel sheet right now, if you can see. Okay, cool. All right, so quickly, I want to, because on Tuesday, so on Tuesday, we're going to talk about uh, some practical parts. So they are going to be using uh, VSTS for you. So, but before then, I'll just quickly uh, go into the traditional part that we've done, how to design your test cases. So then next week, we're going to talk about the test design. So one, so what's my test condition? My test condition, I want to do a quick test right now. So my test condition is login to, so I'll bring a site up quickly. So I quickly want to test login onto this. That's what I want to do today. So so now, so this is my test condition or uh, login to keyfridge.com. So traditionally, if you are not using any tool, but they are going to go through a tool for you. So you're going to have serial number for your steps, and you're going to have your actions or steps. And then you're going to have your
expected behavior and you're going to have your actual behavior So now we want to, uh, this is our test condition as I've seen. So for instance, the, another test condition will be registry. So, and you're going to have see a number also. That's your number, and you're going to have action or steps. You're going to have expect uh, behavior. I'm going to have um, results, which is either pass or fail. So now, let's say step one. You're going to say what are the what you need to perform to be able to test login. So you need to say navigate. to give tricks. Let's go. This size. Or you can say the site open correctly or depending on Then to click on login link. When you do that, the login page opens. Then three, enter username or So now this is your 
this is now becoming your test process procedure, right? This is becoming your test pro procedure. This is your test condition, and now you now start to write your test procedure, which is the different steps that you need to use to satisfy that this test condition pass or fail. So then you do the same thing also for test condition registering to that. So you put the steps and everything. So this is you fill this part before let's say you are in agile team. So when development is going on, you fill this part. You know what the requirement says because you read the requirement. In the requirement is saying that this is what you need to do, this is what you should expect. So your requirements you will put that. In some requirements you might not be able to go into this low level right to say click here click here you might also want to go into a level to say oh uh, given i am i am able to log in then i'm able to log in because you don't know the step yet so you want to you will go into low level to say oh user enter your username and password and then click something so but in some cases you might not be able to go into click here click here you might also will go a bit on high level but that's fine. But once you know that information to go into low level, that that should be fine. But you would you would write these two, you will fill out these two columns. Then after that, when development have has finished, then you will now take your script. You will say navigate to dagifree.com, you go to the site, you navigate, and then you expect to see that the site is open correctly. If it's open correctly, most people will say, oh, the site opened correctly. Then you click on login, right? Let's say I go here right now. I go, I click on login. And so, and then I say that. So the login, click on login link. Yeah, I can click on login link. So, and then login link. Go login page opened successfully so I enter email I can just say as expected because that also so I can enter the email that I've been asked to enter so if I put that in and I put my password and I click on sign in. So then I should be able to sign in. So that's what you're going to do. Boom. So so that also is as expected. Then click on login. So let's assume that, okay, that is my valid password. And so what happened? I got, I got an error. I got an error. So also I think I, I didn't put this one here. So that also needs to be here. So this is pass. This is pass, this is pass, this is pass, and from that, this is fail. So, because I put the password and it's not, I get error message. So, now, this is point, because this is fail, this makes this particular test condition to fail. So, what am I going to do? I need to raise a bug. So, I, will can, write, I can raise a bug 
and put this step in the box. This is the step I used, and the developer can look into that step, and then they will be able to fix the bug, and that is that. So, yeah, so you can, on your own, you can try to look into this part, how to, if you, how to do that. So you can create a step for that, and then next week we can meet to, to continue from where we, we are. So on Tuesday, that will be, so on Tuesday we're going to also meet, so then we would deliberate on what to do. Yeah. Any questions? Okay, any question? If there's no any questions, so we call it, um, we meet next week. So, so next week, on we're going to be on a Tuesday, so it's o'clock on a Tuesday. So, It's, uh, I'm not sure, uh, yeah, it's 8 o'clock on Tuesday, so, on Tuesday, so for the practical part, so, um, yeah, so, then we're going to have another session on Thursday for the manual testing, then that'll be it for the manual testing, so, then the upper week is going to be the automation. Okay, DJ, a quick one. I I want to.